An easy way to start creating short fur on your characters in Ornatrix is to use the surface comb operator where hair is controlled using something called sinks. The sinks tool is available from the main toolbar in Ornatrix right next to the draw strands tool. You can simply click it and then drag on top of your previously unhaired surface to create the hair. And as you create the hair, you start creating this directional sink, which ultimately specifies where the hair will be pointing at. The initial hair that's created for you is a basic operator stack consisting of uh, guides and uh, hair from guides. And then at the top, you get the surface comb. If I just decrease the length of my hair, you can see that my whole model gets populated with the hair. And then the surface comb is where we have created our sink. If I select this tool and drag more points on the surface, I can further refine the directions of the sinks and where they will be pointing at. However, uh, to create something a little bit more usable, especially in our current uh, model, let's start from scratch again. And instead of uh, creating the hair directly onto a blank mesh, we will first plant some hairs onto the surface. So I will use the create brush and uh, I will change the brush a little bit to start creating the hairs where I would expect to see them on my character. If I expand uh, this uh, tool settings, I can set the spacing of my hairs. And maybe it needs to be a little bit smaller. So I will just quickly drag and create uh, the hair to populate it on top of my character. Okay, so I am somewhat satisfied with the position of my hairs. The actual hair length or anything else besides maybe the hair width doesn't really matter. And uh, again, this is demonstration purposes. You would probably want to have a little bit more density in the hair. But for uh, this tutorial, I'll just use them spaced like this. So uh, the next thing I can do is I can again go to the sinks tool and I can create my initial sink, which will push the hairs backwards. And uh, just like this, we already have some kind of interesting hair shape. Uh, there are a couple of uh, notes regarding the sinks. The first one is that the tool settings contains uh, the settings that are specific to the currently selected sink. The sinks can be moved on top of your mesh, so you can physically move them after you create them. You can also change their direction on top of the mesh. And then the surface comb operator contains the uh, settings that are global to the whole surface comb, with stuff like uh, the strand group, the blending, and the algorithm used for the sinks. The algorithm is quite important. The mesh vertex one is the older algorithm. It is quicker and it's mostly designed to work for shorter fur. And the triangulation algorithm will work better for both fur and even longer hair, as we will see in this quick tutorial. So um, the random seed and other options are also important, especially uh, um, the couple of options here. We have the affect whole strand option. If I click this, then the sink length will actually modify the length of our hairs. As I increase the sink length, you can see that the hair will increase along with it. And the stick to surface option will cause uh, the hair to continue traveling along its current trajectory as long as it's not going to hit the surface uh, as, as is uh, specified with the sink. Then we have the slope ramp where the sink specifies the shape of the hair or rather the direction of the hair on the surface. The slope ramp specifies the shape perpendicular to the surface. So the closer you get to the top of this curve, the more it will stick to the surface. If I really get it really close, you can see that the hair basically closely follows the sink that they have and it curves around the edges as appropriately. Uh, if I click the stick to surface option, the hair will completely stick to my mesh surface. So to continue, let's create uh, another sink just to this side here. And this sink will control the flow or the direction of the hairs that are closest to it. If we have three or more sinks, then the directions of the hairs will be interpolated between the sinks that we have. Uh, again, because we are controlling the length of the hair using our sinks, we can increase the length uh, of the hair for some sinks while making the hair sh super short for other sinks. So this may be on the sides, I want the hair to be super short, like really, really short. Whereas at the top, 
I want it to be longer and at the back I want it to be super long. If I uncheck the stick to surface option you can see that the hair will continue traveling uh, at the places where the sinks um, where the sinks kind of leave the surface and the, the surface does not prevent the hair from traveling along it. So I'm just going to change the slope ramp a little bit to give our hair some shape. And we can continue exploring the options. <coughs> so as you see, we have created sync on this side that uh, changes the hair length to be quite short. And if we want to copy the settings onto the other side, we can just mirror the sync on the other side. To do this, I go to my tool settings, which again reflects the settings of the currently selected uh, sync. And I will set the mirror axis to X, which is uh, right here. When I do this, you can see that we have a little gray sync here that's not selectable that will mirror everything that, that the other sink on this other side does. So we have uh, short hair on the sides. So maybe I want to introduce a, a bank in banks in front of my character's face. So what I can do is I can add a sink here and then I can add an opposite sink that will go forward over here. Uh, sinks can have an individual or personalized slope curve and to do this you select the sync that uh, you want to edit and then you click the override button here and then when you edit the curve the shape of the hair will only be modified for the currently selected sync so maybe for the banks I want to use uh, a curve that, that more closely follows the, the character's face and then to direct it uh, a little bit to the side I can just add another sync over here and modify its settings as well Despite your best efforts, you may still have unwanted interpolation between sinks that uh, happens in places like this, for example. Uh, I want to be able to tell sinks to not interpolate between uh, this, this sink over here and this sink, so the hairs will have a clear part between them. This is quite easily done, and this is done by assigning sink groups. If you go to the tool settings while having the sink, uh, sink tool selected, you can specify the sink group. By default, it's empty. And the empty group will uh, means that uh, each sink will have a global part. But if you specify a value for a sink, for example, one, and then you specify a value for another sink, for example, for this one, we we'll specify a value of two, then the values between those sinks will not be interpolated. You may need to create some more sinks to enforce this part. So I'll just create one over here and I'll make sure it's mirrored and I'm going to create uh, set the value for this one to 1 as well so we have our, our bank uh, here clearly separated from all the other hairs that are participating in our groom and you can, you can select things and move them around to kind of uh, find the position for those things that best match your desired uh, hair shape and uh, this is the beauty of the surface comb that these values can always be adjusted uh, in the future without doing too many things really you just have to uh, you can tweak things around non destructive so some other things you can change uh, with the sinks is uh, you can change the sink type by default it's set to, di set to direct when you have a direct sink the hairs will flow along the direction of the sink but you can also change it to be a repel sink uh, the sink will repel the hair away from it and uh, just like before you can set the size of the sink by dragging this uh, the manipulator over here or you can set the sink to be a tracked sink which means the hairs will be attracted towards the sink the best that they can you can also set the modes uh, for the editing from add to edit when you have the edit mode even if you click on an empty spot on top of your uh, mesh you will not create new sinks by accident whereas if you have the add mode then you can both select sinks by clicking on top of them but you can also add new ones by clicking the top of your mesh <coughs> so I'm going to set this back to direct going back to the surface comb options there are a few other things that you can manipulate here one is the chaos parameter so you can create some uh, some frizziness or, or some randomness in your hair by changing this value uh, to a higher value 
and you can also change the scale so you can make this uh, high frequency noise or you can make it really low smooth kind of uh, variation in the hairs uh, this this sometimes helps to add a little bit uh, more realis realism to your grooms So with some quick tweaking and just uh, maybe like four things, I was able to create this type of a hairstyle, which was uh, really effortless to do. And now it allows me to maybe I'll add a few more modifiers on top and maybe something like uh, edit guides to, to really uh, fine tune and uh, add some more definition to my hair where I need to do this. So again, uh, use this to create some nice base grooms or even final grooms of a hair for both long-haired uh, long characters or, and short-haired characters. One final note is that this target shape over here, when you click the, uh, the edit sinks option and the brushes option, you can see that this is uh, very familiar or rather exactly the same. And uh, you can use this to control how the surface comb will be created. When you have the selected option here, even if I have my hair shape selected overall and I start dragging on top of it, the sinks are going to be added to the existing surface comb, which is already inside the stack. But if I have uh, selected off and I have um, only the new option available here, then every time I add a sink, a new surface comb will be added on top of my um, on my operator stack. So these options are covered in the documentation if you want to look uh, more at them. Um, but they're really useful if you don't really want to look at your operator stack at all. You, maybe it's collapsed, uh, but you still want to have control over how the, the sinks are applied on top of your mesh. So that's all for now.